Hello, honey pie. Come away in and see who's at home today. Granny Murray's house has two at home to play. Granny Murray's house is home too. Who's here today? Well, we've got Ashley and we've got Eva. But don't just sit there, puppies. Come on, on your feet. We're going to play a wee game called Grandmother's Footsteps. What did I hear? Oh, oh they're very good, they're very still. <gasps> Who's moving? Let's see if I can catch you moving. <laughs> well done, my girls, that was brilliant. Well, we've got Ashley and we've got Eva, but someone's missing from home today. Oh, not anymore. Who's coming home to Granny Murray? Oh, yes, it's Lisa <laughs> with Tina. Hello there. <laughs> Tina. <laughs> and Lisa, come on, we three, hi, hi. Big hero. Jewels of all jewels. <laughs> We've been playing Grandmother's Footsteps before you got here. Oh, all that behind you. <laughs> Makes me think of the pantomime that Raymond and I are putting on in Drumtown. Oh, of course you're panto. Well, that gives me an idea. Why don't you all dress Claude up as a pantomime dame? <laughs> and we can sit in our seats, dear. Oh, no, we can't. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so how's your pantomime coming along? Dick Whittington, isn't it? <gasps> That's right. Oh, rehearsals are hilarious. You should see Raymond in his dame's wig. Oh, I bet he suits it. He does. And Lisa's just dying to come and see the show. Oh, me too. Now, it's in Drumtown Playhouse, isn't it? That's right. But don't worry about getting there. I'll take you in my taxi with Lisa. Oh, thanks, Poppet. You know, for you and Raymond, all the world's a stage. We just love performing everywhere. Wow, look at Claude. Behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Claude. We could have you in our panto dress like that. <laughs> well, I'd best be off to work yeah. now. <gasps> For me? Oh, it's just a little cat like Dick Whittington's. <laughs> you have fun today. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. See you later. Come on then, Tina. Now remember, all the world's a stage. Thank you, Granny Murray. I'll see you later. Bye bye, my darling. We'll be thinking of you. Me too. <laughs> Will you keep a wee eye on Tina and make sure she goes the right way to work? I'd better hurry. Could you tell me the fastest way for me to get to work? Thank you. I'm in, 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 in a hurry. I need, need, need to speak to work. I'll take a, take a ticket on the subway. I'll be, 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 be there quite quick. Hurry, hurry, hurry through the tunnels. Oh, clatter, clatter, clatter underground. Whining, whining, whining drives the speed up. Squeaking, squeaking, squeaking slows us down. Clatter, 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 on the streets, no squeaking, squeaking to our stop. I'm in, 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 I'm in a hurry. I need to speak to work. Phew! Well, what now? Of course! I have to get ready for work. <laughs> The engine sounded funny then. I thought so. There's something wrong. Ah, it's the alternator. Right now, where is my... Oh, there it is. That's me. This spare alternator looks a bit old, but it might do the job until I get a chance to buy a new one. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, sorry, Tina. You got uh, a problem? Yes, my alternator's broken. I've got the spare one that I can fit, but I don't think it'll last long. Hey, my mate Terry can help you out. 
He works at a university and he knows about everything to do with electrics. I'm sure he can fix your alternator. Oh, that's brilliant. Here you go. Thanks, Mickey right. John. OK. Yeah, shove it in my bag. <laughs> right, I'll be back later. Oh. Bye. Bye. Don't worry, Lisa. I'll get you to Drumtown to see our panto. I'd love to skip in Riversy Pingle, Riversy Pingle by the sea. I'd love to skip in Riversy Pingle, Riversy Pingle, that's for me. Right, we've nearly got our panto picnic finished. What about our beautiful princess? Will we give her a lovely sketch? Yeah. There we are. <laughs> and there's our magic wand. Are you looking forward to seeing Mum and Dad on the stage? Ah, uh, me too. <laughs> Are you working hard, Mummy? That's it, all done. What are you doing, my dove? I'm fixing the engine. The alternator went up the spout. Jolly good. But shouldn't you be at the Drumtown Playhouse getting the stage ready for our panto? Yes, I've just popped in to get my wig. Oh, <laughs> of course. But don't worry, I'll be there in plenty of time before you arrive with Granny Murray and Lisa in your taxi. Oh, great. I'll see you there. Mm. Mwah. <laughs> well, now that I've fitted the spare alternator into my taxi engine, it's time I got down to some hard work. City roads are waiting. Oh, the traffic lights are changing. Police cars are cruising. The trucks keep a trapping and the city roads are waiting for me to take a drive in my brain. Calls up a taxi fare. Who am I going to meet? <laughs> Looking for a job in my pretty pink taxi. Oh, woo! Cruising the city in my pretty pink taxi. Yeah. Drive, drive, drive in my pretty pink taxi. engine still doesn't sound right. Ooh! <laughs> you still here? Oh! <laughs> yes, love of my life. I was just going over my lines. I'm word perfect. <gasps> That's my boy. But now I must dash to Drumtown. Uh, maybe you should take the wig off first, Raymond. Oh, good <laughs> idea. <laughs> and after I pick up Granny Murray and Lisa, we'll be right behind you. Mwah. I'm going to pick you up at Granny Murray's soon, Lisa. I love to skip in River Sea Pingle, River Sea Pingle, that's for me. <sighs> Mum will be here soon, my darling. She won't be long now, Angel. Don't you worry, Lisa. Mum will be here to pick us up soon. <laughs> Where are you, Mummy? Catastrophe! I got chatting to Chuck in the platform and I've missed my train to Drumtown. Oh, well, don't worry. We can all go over together in my taxi. Granny Murray and Lisa would love to ride with the star of the show. Good thinking. <laughs> oh, no! Oh! The spare alternator has packed up and I haven't had a chance to get a new one. Oh, Mickey John. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Did your friend at university manage to mend my alternator? No. My friend wasn't quite as good as I thought he was. 
He did manage to take your alternator apart, but uh, he couldn't put it back together again. Oh! I am meant to be taking Granny, Murray and Lisa to Drumtown to see the panto, but Raymond's missed his train and now I can't get my taxi to move. How did this happen? Where did the time go? At ten o'clock, I dropped Lisa at Granny Murray's. I told her about the panto that Raymond and I were doing later, and I promised Granny Murray that I'd take her to Drumtown for the panto. At eleven o'clock, I got to the garage. But my taxi had a problem with its engine. The alternator was broken. Mickey John called by. He took the alternator away to his friend at the university. Then I fitted a spare alternator to keep my taxi going in the meantime. At 12 o'clock, Raymond came to the garage to find some panto props. At 4 o'clock, I realised I was late to pick up Granny Murray and Lisa. Then Raymond arrived. He had missed his train. So we got into my taxi, but it wouldn't start. And Mickey John's friend hadn't mended the alternator either. So no one can go to Drumtown to see our panto. Now remember, all the world's a stage. All the world's a stage. Well, of course. We can't do the panto in Drumtown, so we'll do it right here in the garage. Right. Mickey John, you go and find Granny Murray and Lisa and anyone else you can round up. Raymond and I will be telling the story of Dick Whittington and his cat right here in the Archer's Theatre. It's a race against time. I've got to do it, I've got to do it. I've got to beat the clock before the chime. I've got to sort it, I've got to sort it. I've got to do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm going to beat that bong. I'm going to finish this job before I finish this song. Do we think she's going to do it? Do the job that needs to be done? Will she know how to fix it? Will she finish what she has begun? I'm going to beat the clock before the chime. I'm going to sort it. She's going to sort it. I'm going to do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm going to beat that bong. I'm going to finish the job before I finish the song. Ladies and gentlemen, the Arches Theatre Company proudly presents Dick Whittington and his cat. <laughs> oh, I'm fed up just being a poor orphan boy with nothing to eat. I'm off to London. And I'll make my fortune, or my name's not Dick Whittington. Mm, I could do with a kip. <laughs> oh, who's this asleep on my doorstep, poor lad? Oh, I'm Aldermere Fitzwarren. Any work going, Gov? Oh, indeed, you can work in the kitchen. I'll just call my daughter Alice. Alice? <laughs> Yes, Dad. Oh. <laughs> Alice, this is Dick. He's going to stay in the spare room. Night, night. <laughs> squeak, squeak. Oh! Oh, crumbs! My bedroom's full of rats! First thing tomorrow, I'm going to the shops to buy a cat. Ah! I'd like a cat, please. A pussycat, right? Um, that'll be one penny, please. <laughs> Here, puss, 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 puss. Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, puss. Let's go. Hey, puss! That ship's sailing to Zanzibar. We can have an adventure. All aboard! <laughs> Hello, young man. Welcome to Zanzibar. <laughs> Hello, mush. My land is overrun with rats. Look. Oh. I'm the king of the rats, so watch it. You don't scare me or my cat. Hop it, ratty. <laughs> ah, a moggy. Oi, off. <laughs> Bye, rat face. Will this do? Oh, thanks. Come on, puss. Let's go home and ask Alice to marry me. Me <laughs> Hello, Dick. Any chance of marrying Alice and living happily ever after? I don't see why not. Oh, Dick, I'm so happy. <laughs> We're ahead, darling. Oh, yes. 
I think Lisa enjoyed it. <laughs> me too, Granny Murray. I remembered what you said. All the world's a stage. It saved the day. Oh, I'm pleased. Right, come on you two. Let's get you home. <laughs> come on, Lisa. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> my darlings. Looking forward to next time. Oh, me too. And <laughs> come on, Lisa. Should we go and talk about our time away? No, it's a time away. <laughs> And I suppose you want me to tell you all about my time too. Well, there was hacking, squishing, walking, pushing, dancing, dusting, shading, choosing, talking, cooking, drying, cleaning, saving, cleaning, loving, joking, losing things and rushing round, dressing up and sitting down. <laughs> but what was really special about today? Well, Claude was dressed as a pantomime dame because we were getting ready to go and watch Dick Whittington and his cat. Raymond and Tina were both the stars of the show. A bit later, we sat on the doorstep for ages waiting for Tina to pick us up in our taxi. Then there was a change of plan. Instead of doing the panto in Drumtown, Tina and Raymond made a special stage at the taxi garage and we watched their panto there. Oh, it was really funny. Raymond had to keep changing his costumes. It was lucky that Tina remembered that all the world's a stage. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Me too. Bye-bye, honey pie. <laughs> Me too! Hello, honey pie. Come away in and see who's at home today. Granny Murray's house has two at home to play. Granny Murray's house is home too. Who's here today? Well, we've got Stephen and we've got Rachel. I don't just sit there, angels. What's in Granny Murray's shelves today? <gasps> Cushions! We are going to play a very special game. It's called the Trolley Dash Game. Go! Ready, boys, boys, bash, Rachel, isn't it? In it goes, and back round, right round. Good boy! Well, we've got Rachel and we've got Stephen, but someone's missing from home today. Come on, Jack. Oh, not anymore. Who's coming home to Granny Murray? Oh, yes, it's Rudy with Jack. Hello there. Look. <laughs> Rudy, hello. Hi, Granny Murray. And Jack. Oh, I've been squeezing. <laughs> Come on, my dad. Oh, my. Oh, careful you don't step in the aisles. Aisles? Yes, we'll be playing Granny Murray's shopping trolley dash game. Oh, that sounds great. Hey, was Claude working on the checkout? No, but that gives me a great idea. Why don't you all dress Claude up as a checkout person? <laughs> oh, and I'll tell you what, Granny Murray, why don't we go and check out your comfy chairs? Come on, dear boy. Trolley on. No. <laughs> Talking of trolleys, Rudy, I've just got a new one. It's striped and it's divine. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine that'll be really handy for whizzing round the supermarket. Oh, yes. Do you know, I remember when I was young, there were no such things as supermarkets. What? You can't be serious. Oh, that's right. We did all our shopping at Mr Stokes' shop on the corner. It sold everything from vegetables to boot polish. <laughs> Old Mr Stokes was quite a character too. Wow, what was he like? He had little round glasses perched <laughs> on the end of his nose and a big fluffy white moustache that vibrated every time he laughed. <laughs> I remember him well. My memory's like a sieve. I can't remember what I had for me tea yesterday. Well, it's amazing what you can remember when you think about it. And that reminds me, I'd best be off to work. Oh, look at Claude. Already at the till. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Claude, I'd like to pay for um, a dozen eggs and a packet of pegs, please. <laughs> and Daddy, yes. th this is the paper for your shopping. Oh, brilliant. Hey, is that the receipt for what I just bought? <laughs> yes. I'll pop that in my pocket and take that with me. That's great. You give us a cuddle, eh? 
Go yeah. on, yeah. You're going to behave yourself? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> right, have a good day, kids. Bye bye. 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 Now remember, it's amazing what you can remember when you think about it. Thanks, Granny Murray. I'll see you later. Bye-bye, my darling. We'll be thinking of you. <laughs> Me too. Will you keep a wee eye on Rudy and make sure he goes the right way to work? I'm on my way to work today I'm walking me shoes through the city views I'm stepping along and I'm swinging me arms and I'm singing my way through the city's charms I get in there, it's just so fine I so enjoy my walking time I always go the way I know But can you tell me the way I go? OK, which way? And do I go left now? Or do I go right? Which way is wrong now? And which way is right? Right! OK, that way, to the market. I'm on my way to work today. I'm going this way and that away. Hello, cobbles. Hello, train. Hello, roadworks. Hello, tram. Hello, sweeper. Hello, bag. Do I go down? Which way's a smile now? And which way's a frown? Ah! What, this way? You told me the way to go Thank you, you showed me the way I know oh, Great, I've arrived So what next? <laughs> That's right, I need to get changed into my work clothes All dressed and ready to go. <laughs> hello, Rudy. Oh, hello, Bobby. Oh, what can I get for you today? Oh, loads. I'm doing some shopping for my neighbour, Lucy, and I've got a list as long as your arm. <laughs> oh, right. I better get bags at the ready, then. Oh, no need for any bags today, thanks, Rudy. I borrowed my neighbour Lucy's shopping trolley. They're all the rage, you know. Oh, well, you tell me what you want and I'll just pop the items straight in the trolley, then. Great. Um, I'll have two apples, please. That's two? Happy apples. Um, a bunch of bananas. Right, bunch of bananas. One bunch of pyjamas bananas. <laughs> Two carrots. Two carrots for parrots. <laughs> and a peach. Oh, one peach for the beach. There we go. Anything else? No, that's great, thanks. All oh, right, well, that'll be um, £1.50, please. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Bobs. Oh, gosh. Is that the time? No, oh, trouble. Well, I promised Kai would go down to his nursery this morning. They're having a bit of a do, and if I don't go now, I'm going to miss it. Oh, well, hey, well, why don't you leave Lucy's trolley full of shopping here, and then you'll get there much quicker without it. Are you sure it's not going to be any way? <laughs> oh, not at all. Give us it here. Oh, thanks, Rudy. That's a great help. Say hi to Kai. I will do. See you later, Rudy. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wonder how Jack's getting on today. I love to skip in River Sea Pingle, River Sea Pingle, that's for me. You've got to try and remember all the things on the tree, and then Granny Murray will cover it up and take one away, and you've to remember which item is missing. Look hard. Now, I'm going to cover it up. Ooh! Oh, me, guess me. Guess. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Oh. No peeping. Ta da! Pain I bought from your dad's stall yesterday. You can do magic. Are you selling lots of things, Daddy? Hi, Rudy. This new shopping trolley that I bought today is certainly whizzing me around the market. It's all the rage, you know. <laughs> so I hear, Doc. So it's everything ready to go? Everything? For Chuck's birthday. Oh, don't tell me you've forgotten to make up the posy of roses for her. Oops. Oh, ring a ring a roses. Where are those poses? Oh, they're perfect. 
perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Rudy. Oh, I'm glad you reminded me, though, Doc, because they'd have been sitting in that bucket till the middle of next week. Oh, Chuck will love these. Well, say happy birthday from me. Oh, I will. See you later. <laughs> See you later, Doc. Right, and I'd better get down to some hard work. And doobie doobie doo. I make it look easy. What I do be do be do. And what I do is sell to you and you and you. All of the veggies for a stew. But it's more than meets the eye. What I do for you as I buy and buy. While you still sleep, those fruit and veg to eat. And the flowers in the early hours So when wake up comes It's there for you The market stalls are there to view Oh the market, the market What a wonderful place The hubbub of people The smiles on each face oh, The market, the market Come look around the hustle, the bustle, the bubbles of sound The colours all chaotic and spilling about The smells all exotic, yeah, the market cries out Objects to excite you and draw you near The buying and the selling, cheap or dear The market, the market, I just love to be there The market is a wonderful place have a good day. Hi, Rudy. Sorry I don't have time to chat. I'm in a bit of a rush. Well, it's my fault. I stopped to buy my lovely stripey shopping trolley. They are all the rage, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Tina. They're everywhere. Mm. Raymond and Lisa and I are uh, going for a short break in the hills. Oh, well, it should be a good drive. I hope the weather holds out. Yeah, me too. You know, Raymond wants to take us on one of his long hikes. <laughs> So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking for something for a snack. I've got some kiwi fruit. Uh, no, they're rather too exotic. Um, oh, these look perfect. I'll have three lovely large oranges, please. That'll be 60 pence, please, <laughs> Tina. You got thanks. <laughs> no problem. Have a good trip. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Oh, I hope you've had a nice, healthy snack today, Jack. <laughs> Good one, Jack. Right, it's my turn. I spy with my little eye something beginning with O. Oh. And I'll give you a clue. Your dad sells them in the market stall. Orange. Oh. <laughs> You're too good, Jack. <laughs> Are you having fun, Daddy? <laughs> there you go, Jack. A nice juicy orange for you later. Oh, sorry I'm late, Rudy. The do at Kai's nursery went on a bit longer than I expected. Oh, don't worry, Bobby. I wasn't going anywhere. No, but I should be. Lucy's going to be wondering where I've got to with her shopping. Now, where did I leave my trolley? Oh, it's just down there, Bobs. Oh, no. Here it is. Oh. All stripes <laughs> and all the rage. <laughs> Better just check that I've got everything I came for. Hang on. What's happened to my shopping? Ha happened? Well, what, what do you mean? My shopping has turned into walking boots. Huh? But a trolley full of shopping can't just turn into walking boots, Bobby. What's gone on? What have I done wrong? Where did the time go? At seven o'clock, I dropped Jack off at Granny Murray's. They were all busy playing Granny Murray's trolley dash game. Granny Murray told me about her new stripey shopping trolley that's all the rage. At eight o'clock, Bobby arrived at the store to get some shopping for her neighbour, Lucy. She popped everything she bought into a new stripy shopping trolley, which she left with me when she remembered she had to dash off to Kai's nursery. At 11 o'clock, Dr Juno came along to pick up a posy of roses for Chuck's birthday. She told me she had one of the new stripy shopping trolleys too. At 3 o'clock, Tina dropped in for some oranges. She had popped into town to buy another of the new stripy shopping trolleys and was now running late for a walking trip to the hills with Raymond and Lisa. At 4 o'clock, Bobby came back for Lucy's stripy shopping trolley. But inside the shopping trolley, there was no shopping, only a pair of walking boots. 
now remember. It's amazing what you can remember when you think about it. It's amazing what you can remember when you think about it. Of course, Granny Murray's right. I remember that Tina had a stripy trolley just like yours. She must have taken your trolley and left hers here instead. But what about Lucy's shopping? Well, just read the list out again, Bobs. We'll start from scratch. Oh, I haven't got the list anymore. I've thrown it away. Bobby, it's amazing what you can remember when you think about it. But it's a race against time. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to beat the clock before the chime. I've got to sort it. I've got to sort it. I've got to do the job on time. I like a busy bee. I'm gonna beat that bong. I'm gonna finish this job before I finish this song. Do we think he's got to do it? Do the job that needs to be done. Will he know how to fix it? Will he finish what he has begun? I'm gonna do it. He's gonna do it. I'm gonna beat the clock before the chime. I'm gonna sort it. He's gonna sort it. I'm gonna do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm gonna beat that bong. I'm gonna finish this job before I finish this song. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to both of you for bringing my shopping home. Oh, well, if it hadn't been for Clever Clog's rude ear, I'd never have remembered what was on your list. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that difficult, Bobby. There was... Two... Happy apples, one bunch of pyjamas bananas, two carrots for parrots, <laughs> and finally one peach for the beach. That's perfectly remembered, Rudy. Oh, and I hope Jack remembers to have a good time at Granny Murray's today. <laughs> Could you put those oranges in the bowl, darling? <laughs> I don't remember buying all these tins, but I suppose they must have. There we are. I'd better unload this trolley before your dad gets here. Yeah. Ready? Come away in. Hi, Granny Murray. Someone to see you, Jack. Hello, Dad. mate. Give us a cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you had a great time with Granny Murray. Yeah, we yeah. certainly did. <laughs> Say thank you to Granny Murray. Oh, thank you, Granny Murray. Oh, a pleasure, my darling boy. <laughs> and thanks from me too, Granny Murray. I thought about what you said. It's amazing what you can remember when you think about it. It saved the day. Oh, thanks, Rudy. Well, we'd better get you two home. <laughs> Come on, mate. Looking forward to next time. <laughs> Me bye too. Bye. Hey, come on, Jack. Let's talk about our time away. And I suppose you want me to tell you all about my time too. Well, there was playing, running, creeping, jumping, chasing, painting, laughing, digging, bathing, dressing, singing, swinging, walking, sliding, hunting, hiding, jumping up and turning round, dressing up and sitting down. <sighs> but what was really special about today? Well, Claude was dressed as a supermarket cashier today because we had been playing Granny Murray's shopping trolley dash. It was great! Rudy arrived to join in the fun. The children made me laugh when they played a guessing game with me later. Jack's memory was fantastic! On the way home from shopping, Jack and I played I Spy. Jack was terrific and terrific at helping me unpack the shopping at home. Rudy remembered that it's amazing what you can remember when you think about it. And that helped Bobby do her shopping too. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Me too. Bye bye, honey pie. Me too! Hello, honey pie. Come away in and see who's at home today. Granny Murray's house has two at home to play. Granny Murray's house is home too. Who's here today? Well, we've got Ellie and we've got Sean. And don't just stay there, my wee cream buns. Come on, let's get moving. Giddy up. Giddy up, Percy. Oh, Stella, Percy. <laughs> oh, you've got a frisky one there, Sean, haven't you? Come on, Percy. Me. Well, we've got Ellie and we've got Sean, but someone's missing from home today. Oh, not anymore. 
Who's coming home to Granny Murray? Oh, it's Mickey John with Rebecca. Hello there. Mickey John. Hello. Oh, hey, this looks exciting. What are you playing at? I know. It's knights from the olden days riding home to their castle. How wonderful. Let's dress God up as a knight in shining armour. I am the brave knight Sir Mickey of Riversea Fingal. Would you care to walk with me to the comfy part of the castle, my lady? Oh, it would be an honour, Sir Mickey. Mm. Oh, oh. At your service, my lady. Too kind. <laughs> Do you know, I'm glad you made me think of knights in armour. I'm going to take Rebecca to the castle later to see what we can see. We're having a knights and castles day at school today. My old friend Professor Lumpton's coming to talk to the children. He knows everything there is to know about the days of old. Do you know how the knights got on their horses? Well, I just imagine they grabbed hold of the reins and climbed on. No, the armour was so heavy, they had a big thing like a crane that would lift them up, swing them round and put them down on the horse. Huh. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm the teacher and you know more about knights and castles than I do. Oh, it's surprising what you know when you think about it. <laughs> oh, look at Claude. Oh, Claude, you look like a knight in shining armour. Oh, I leave you to guard the castle, Claude, while I go off to battle. Well, school, actually. <laughs> oh, thank you, sweetheart. Now, this little fella's called a jester. Did you know that? And he used to live in a castle. Did you know that? Did he really? I must get Professor Lumpton to tell me all about jesters when he comes to school. Brave knights, fair ladies, farewell. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, it's surprising what you know when you think about it. Thank you, Granny Murray. I'll see you later. Bye-bye, my darling. We'll be thinking of you. Me too. You keep a wee eye on Mickey John. Make sure he goes the right way to work. I'm on my way to work today. Walking my shoes through the city views. Stepping along and swinging my arms. Singing my way through the city's charms. Getting there is just so fine. I so enjoy my walking time. I always go the way I know. Can you show me the way I go? Hey! Okay, which way? Do I go left now? Do I go right? Which way is wrong now? Which way is right? Right! Okay, right, to the school. I'm on my way to work today. Looking this way and that away. Hello, Ali. Hello, doors. Hello, steeple. Hello, walls. Hello, people. I go up now, do I go down? Which way's a smile now, which way's a frown? Ah! Okay, that way, up! You told me the way to go. Thank you, you showed me the way I know. Thank you for getting me to work on time. Oh, yes. What's next? Oh, that's right, I have to put my tie on. Dressed and ready to go. <laughs> oh, hey. So, Mr. Jester, who's coming to visit us today? Professor Lumpton, to talk about knights and castles. I'm here. Oh, you're early, Professor. Professor? No, it's me, Raymond. Don't you remember? I said I'd bring over this box of costumes for the children to wear in the school play. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> thanks for bringing them round. So, who's this Professor then? Oh, Professor Lumpton. He's an old friend of mine. He's coming to talk to the children about how people used to live in castles in the old days. Castles, eh? Mm. Oh, well, there's a costume in here that might interest you. It's a jester costume, like this little fella's wearing. 
every castle had a jester, you know. They didn't have television or computer games in those days, so the jester's job was to entertain the kings and queens and knights and ladies. Ah, oh, so that's what a jester did? Yes, he'd tell jokes and make everyone laugh. Sometimes he'd sing funny songs, sometimes he'd be an acrobat. <laughs> oh, he must have been a pretty clever fellow. He had to be, because if he didn't make the king laugh, he'd be chucked out the castle. Oh, poor jester. I know. Anyway, I better get back to work. So, I hope the professor's talk goes well. Thanks for bringing the costumes round. See ya. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Gosh, I've learned a lot today and school hasn't even started yet. <laughs> I hope you're having fun, Rebecca. I love to skip in River Sea Pingle, River Sea Pingle by the sea. I love to skip in River Sea Pingle, River Sea Pingle, that's for me. Here we go. Oh, Rebecca. You look just like a princess in a castle. <laughs> Whoops! This hat looks a bit like an upside-down ice cream cone, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> just like I was telling your daddy earlier on. That's better. Oh, beautiful. Are you working hard, Daddy? John? Hello, Tina. I've just popped in to see what time you want me to collect your Professor Lumpton from the train station. Oh, yes. Well, he's arriving at the station at one o'clock. Now, can you bring him straight here because he's going to tell the children all about knights and castles. Oh, knights and castles? Oh, well, then shouldn't he be arriving on a horse rather than in a taxi? Why on a horse? Well, in the olden days, if you wanted to get anywhere, you had to either walk or ride on a horse. Oh, oh. Here comes my class. Oh, well, I'll leave you to it then. I'll see you after lunch. Bye. Right. Let's get down to some hard work. Oh, oh, oh. With joy when I go to school in the morning. Teaching with my chums and see the children learning. School day, work away. I'm learning, learning, learning when I'm teaching. I'm teaching, learning, teaching, learning, teaching. School day, work away. To count and teach him to read, learn about birds and plants and seeds, playing games and sports outdoors, blowing my whistle and keeping a score. I'm learning, learning, learning when I'm teaching. We're learning, learning, learning when he's teaching. School day, work away. Oh, the secretary's smiling as she does her organizing. The Johnny fixes, the cookie mixes, and the cleaner keeps us shining. Oh, what joy when I go to school in the morning. Holding the line in the dinner queue while the cookie cooks and serves a stew. Answering the questions where and why. How does it work and how does it fly? I'm learning, learning, learning when I'm teaching. Children peep and eye me as they sit and try their writing. I take a look, I mark their books, the good ones get a smiley. Oh, I want joy when I go to school in the morning. Hi there. Oh, hi, Dr. Juno. What can I do for you? I was speaking to Tina earlier on. She said that Professor Lumpton was coming to speak to your children this afternoon. He certainly is. Do you know him? Oh, yeah, he used to teach at my university. He's brilliant. I wondered whether I could come and listen as well. Of course you can. Oh, thank you. Do you know, he always used to make castle life sound so interesting. But they were never really comfortable places to live. They were all cold and drafty, and they never had any carpets. They had stone floors with bits of straw thrown down. Brrr, I wouldn't fancy that. Well, I'll let Professor Lumpton tell you all about it later on. Now, Tina's picking him up at the station at one o'clock. Oh, well, I'll see you then. Thanks again. I wonder if Rebecca and Granny Murray are at the castle yet. There's a soldier. He's green hat. Is he over there? Keeping the castle safe. <gasps> Rebecca, your daddy would love it here, wouldn't he? What's it like at your school, Daddy? Oh, not yet, but any minute. Get yourself settled in at the back. We're going to be in for an interesting afternoon. Ooh, I'm so excited. Me too. 
Ah, Tina, you made it. Well done. Uh, Mickey John? Where's Professor Lumpton? He's not coming. What? What? I'm sorry to bring bad news, but the professor missed his train and has left a message at the station to say that he won't be able to make it today. Oh, no. This is a disaster. I've been talking about Professor Lumpton all day and everyone was so looking forward to him coming. Now the children have no one to tell them about knights and castles and they'll be back from lunch any minute. Where did the time go? At seven o'clock, I dropped Rebecca at Granny Murray's. I told her about Professor Lumpton coming to talk to the children about knights and castles. Granny Murray knew a lot about knights and castles too. At eight o'clock, I got to school and Raymond arrived with a box of costumes for the school play. He showed me a jester's costume and told me all about what jesters used to do. At nine o'clock, Tina popped in. She wanted to know what time to fetch Professor Lumpton from the station, and she said he should really travel by horse, just like people did in the old days. Then the children arrived and we started our day. At 12 o'clock, it was lunchtime. Dr Juno came to ask if she could hear Professor Lumpton talk to the children. She remembered lots of things he said about castle life. At 1 o'clock, Dr Juno came back for the talk. We were so excited. And then Tina arrived with some very bad news. The professor had missed his train. So now there's no one to talk to the children. Now remember, it's surprising what you know when you think about it. It's surprising what you know when you think about it. So, what do I know? Well, Granny Murray told me about knights. Raymond told me about jesters. Tina told me about how people travelled. And Dr Juno told me what it was like to live in a castle. So there's loads I know I can tell the children. I'll have to make it really interesting, though. You, you can do it! John? Yeah. But it's a race against time. I gotta do it. I gotta do it. I gotta beat the clock before the chime. I gotta sort it. I gotta sort it. I gotta do the job on time. Like a busy bee, I'm gonna beat that bong. I'm gonna finish this job before I finish this song. Do we think he's gonna do it? Do the job that needs to be done. Will he know how to fix it? Will he finish what he has begun? I'm going to beat the clock before the chime I'm going to sort it He's going to start it I'm going to do the job on time Like a busy bee, I'm going to beat that bomb I'm going to finish this job before I finish this song So, what do I know, hearty ones? Well, I know that living in a castle looked a bit like this And we also know that knights used to put on their heavy armour and fight their fierce battles and I know that if you ever wanted to go anywhere, you had to go on a horse. We know that castles weren't warm and they weren't comfy, but the lords and ladies always had a jester to keep them laughing. And jesters knew a song or two. Sir Richard was a knight of old who drove a horse and cart. But when his horse forgot his oats, his cart would never start. His mother said, that rickety thing, go chuck it in the ditch. But Dickie said, no, mother dear, this cart will make us rich. One day he drove it past the king to show his cart with pride. The king then hailed and stopped him and jumped in for the ride. He said, I think I want one, now here's a bag of gold. So Dickie said, your majesty, to you this cart is sold. Oh, well done, Mickey John, that was brilliant. Oh, yes, you made castles and knights sound just as exciting as Professor Lumpton did. Mm, thanks. I never knew I knew so much. <laughs> well, my day's gone better than I'd hoped. I hope you're having a good day, Rebecca. <laughs> Policeman on a horse. <gasps> Not quite a knight in shining armour, but he keeps us safe all the same. <gasps> oh, we'll have to be heading home soon, Rebecca. Your dad will be coming to fetch you, won't he? Where are you, Daddy? <laughs> Mickey John, come away. <laughs> Look who's here, Rebecca. Hello, beautiful girl. Hey, how are you, my friend? Have you had a lovely time? Yes. Oh, you oh. bet we have, eh? 
Say thank you to Granny Murray. Come here, my darling. Oh, good girl. And it's thanks from me too, Granny Murray. You're saying it's surprising what you know when you think about it. Save the day. Well, I never did. Come on now, you'd better be off. Looking forward to next time. Me too. Come on, Rebecca. Let's chat about our time away. And I suppose you want me to tell you all about my time too? Well, there was hugging, squishing, walking, pushing, dancing, dusting, shearing, choosing, talking, cooking, grinding, cleaning, saving, cleaning, loving, joking, losing things, and rushing round, dressing up and sitting down. <sighs> but what was really special about today? Well, Claude was dressed as a knight in armour because Mickey John told us about his professor friend who knew all about knights and castles. We dressed up too to look like ladies from the olden days. Rebecca looked like a princess. Later on, I took Rebecca to look at the castle. We saw a policeman on a horse. He was like a knight, but without the armour. The castle was fantastic and we wondered what it would be like to live in one. And while we were wondering, Mickey John was telling his class exactly what it was like to live in one. When he thought about it, he was surprised at how much he knew. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Me too. Bye-bye, honey pie. I love to sip and river sea things, go river sea things, go by and sea. I love to sip and river sea things, go river sea things, go back for me. Come on and get on down to the city. Where the fairy box stands the blue. Time to call on Granny Murray.